It was still dark outside. The tables in the main section of Stella's coffee shop were empty. And in fact, if I hadn't gotten a text a few minutes earlier, I might have thought nobody showed up. It was, after all, 6.30 in the morning this past Wednesday. I set the papers with a Bible reading down on an empty table. But then I saw them. There were at the back of the cafe at a long table under a pool of light, 10 young people, high school students in all, ready for the weekly youth Bible fellowship that Father Grant runs each week. Grant was felled by the flu earlier this week, so I was the, as it were, substitute teacher We ordered breakfast, and then Nash Bilisali, a senior at Maury who has worked tirelessly to make this fellowship happen, read the collect for today and the gospel reading. I have to preach on this passage this coming Sunday, I told them. I need your help with my sermon. Oh, yeah, said one of the younger girls, rolling her eyes. We have to do Grant's sermon for him every week. Now I know what the secret is. (laughs) We throw around some thoughts about what Jesus meant by being born again. And then the quiet girl sitting next to me just nailed it. She said, it's like seeing everything differently and being able to be yourself because you know you are loved. Isn't that wonderful? Ding, ding, ding. My inner sanctus bell went off when I listened to her. The sanctus bell is what we ring at the moment the bread and the wine are consecrated at the altar. The sanctus bell calls our attention to a holy moment of divine inbreaking or a moment closest to Christ. The word comes from that part of the Eucharist called the Sanctus, holy, 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 Sanctus, 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 Lord God of power and might. The Sanctus Bells calls us to sit up and take notice that something very powerful and very holy is happening, although it may be lost to our senses or lost to our wandering minds. Look up, it says, Because even though what you see is ordinary bread and wine, even though what you taste tastes like ordinary bread and wine, don't be deceived by your senses because through this bread and wine, the real presence of Christ has drawn near to you to be taken in. And it is such ordinary moments with such ordinary things that bring to us the sense that this world of sound and sense is not the only world, maybe not even the primary world, and that there is a more, much more world, greater world than what is in our sight and sense. Over the years, I've come to recognize that there are other moments, other ordinary moments, when something goes off in us that calls us to wake up out of our torpor and sense that we are in the real presence of Christ. I remember reading about John Wesley's moment where he said, my heart is strangely warmed. Another person interviewed on NPR yesterday on BBC said, said it was like It was like a warm drink just filled me. And when that quiet girl said what she said, it was such a moment when the Sanctus bell went off. But it did not end there. Soon it was 10 after 7 and time to end so the kids could go across the street to Maury High School. Let's close with prayer, I said, fishing for a way to end gracefully. Does anyone have any particular thing you want us to pray for? Anything that might be 
weighing heavily on your hearts. Several spoke up and offered names. My grandmother, said the quiet girl. And then a pleasant young man whom I had not previously met with long hair and a warm smile said, I'd like to pray for my mom who may have to have open heart surgery like I had a couple years ago. Ah, ding, ding, ding. Again, the Sanctus bell went off. And afterwards, I thought, what an extraordinary thing that there is a holy place and a holy community gathered around a table under a pool of light in the pre-dawn darkness in the midst of a cynical, anxious, persona-driven world, a highly pressured world, how blessed that young persons can have permission to bring their deepest fears and sorrows and have them brought to prayer by a community. What an extraordinary thing that a group of people who might never hang with one another at school can reveal bits and pieces of self released from the inner bondage by the Spirit through Scripture and received with love and respect. Ding, ding, ding. The irony of it is that we were struggling with the passage from John in which Nicodemus comes to Jesus under the cover of darkness to speak the unspeakable questions of his heart. And maybe we never totally figured out what he meant by being born again or born from above or born a second time for the Greek word meets all three. But as we gathered with Jesus under the cover of darkness, drinking our holy communion of hot chocolates and lattes, I believe we were beginning to taste that second birth that we couldn't quite define. The signs were there. As the signs were there with those early disciples, those Christians gathered through the ages in the pre-dawn darkness to break bread and have their eyes opened to the heart-burning, life-transforming, real presence of the risen Christ. Writing about this passage of Jesus and Nicodemus, the New Testament scholar John Marsh says this, physical begetting may bring one to devout religion, but it remains an activity within this world. But spiritual begetting, spiritual begetting enables one to see the presence of eternity in time. Spiritual begetting takes place in a community that becomes the womb of that second birth. Holy communities in which we can bring the struggles, the questions, our wilderness murmurings, our complaints, and find them blessed by prayer and love, received safely and honorably, and offered to God as we offer bread and wine to be blessed. These groups are in this parish, but they gather under the cover of other names, like book study, or centering prayer, or caring for creation, or hospitality, or pub club, or choir, or flower guild, or altar guild, and more. But it is here each Sunday as we lift ordinary bread and wine made holy through the prayers of community bringing the real presence of Christ that we are given the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the hearts to love the real presence of Christ with us as he was with the disciples, as he was with Nicodemus, as he has been with Christians through the ages. Amen.